This is an alert and a call to action. What you choose to do with this information is ultimately up to you, but failing to act will only help secure the loss of your voice in the process and your freedoms in this country. This is truly a nonpartisan issue. It is an American issue on which we should easily find common ground. If you are truly awake, you know that we have to remain constantly vigilant. We have to look deep, be able to read between the lines, mine for the truth, and spread the word when we find it. If you're the partisan politics type, or if you've been asleep all this time, I urge you to listen to this entire message, then do some research on your own. While there are some issues that we can do nothing about except edu educate others, this particular situation has a solution, but that solution requires action from every one of you and as many more people that you can in turn educate and so on. The only person that can stop you from acting on this is you. Have you ever heard that phrase, we are from the government and we are here to help? On June 9, 2011, President Obama legislated from the Oval Office and signed another executive order to ensure rural America will participate in Agenda 21 goals. Globalization and its implementation arm, ICLEI, getting a partner to reach into rural America. The summary of this executive order federal control of rural American resources, food, health, energy, education, schools, property, water, and ultimately lives. Increased federal regulation through executive order or legislation from the Oval Office. More regulation of food production. More regulation of land use. Agenda 21 implementation accelerates in rural America. Implementation of cap-and-trade, look at the quote, identify and facilitate rural economic opportunities associated with energy development, outdoor recreation, and other conservation-related activities. No definitions of what rural America is, matter of fact, no definitions at all. More lawmaking through regulation at the state and local levels more state and county control over your city and town due to grant money distribution, less local participation due to regionalization, more federal jobs funded at taxpayer expense, rights and issues, your voice. You cannot unelect appointed committee members. You cannot contact your elected representative on an issue because this is leg legislation through committee regulation, strings attached to all that taxpayer-funded grant money. You can read the full executive order below or at the link provided in the description box by clicking Show More. I'm not going to read it over this. Uh, I'm just going to break down what this means to you. First of all, I want you to read the opening paragraph. See the word sustainable? Replace it with the word acceptable. That is what sustainable means to them. This executive order is all about the feds telling rural America what is acceptable to them. This is no longer a local choice or locally controlled. The feds, several states, counties, and local governments have already fallen into the ICLEI trap and have become to implement parts of Agenda 21 through their governments. With this executive order, the feds have moved to escalate their implementation in rural America. Next, ask yourself, why do we need a rural program that proposes, quote, the federal government has an important role to play in order to expand access to the capital necessary for economic growth promote innovation, improve access to health care and education, and expand outdoor recreational activities on public lands." Quote. 
we just passed universal health care and I do not know of any community that does not have educa educational facilities for all of its residents. How do you think the feds foster economic growth under this plan? Jobs, deficits, spending, economic decline, not revenue is the problem. Third, this executive order touts the expansion for outdoor activities on public lands when the reality is that the feds have already exposed their plans to cut back access to public lands and have infringed on property, land, and water rights. Fourth, just how will the feds control local government? Through grants. Yes, money, your tax dollars. The feds will set aside money for rural communities administered by the state to institute grant programs that local communities gladly participate in. Local governments will look at this grant money as a way to supplement its dwindling budgets and without question will agree to federal requirements. Not only is this the process that has overburdened states and local budgets for years, this is the process that has moved the federal agenda into every community in America. 5. This executive order gives control over our public planning and development to a federal committee. We will no longer be able to voice our concerns, opinions, or grievances at the local level and have it matter. This executive order virtually eliminates local government's ability to set policies that benefit rural, rural areas without approval from the feds. 6. Why an appointed committee to coordinate this effort? Committee members will be the heads of specific agencies, offices, and departments by appointment until or unless they themselves appoint their own representative to the council in their stead. This executive order sets up another committee to regulate all aspects of rural life. Residents and local governments will have no opportunity to redress any grievances as these appointees are not elected. 7. Why is the Department of Homeland Security involved in the federal government promoting economic prosperity and quality of life in rural America? The majority of these agencies listed in this executive order are already under or partnered with allowing a certain amount of authority to DHS and Janet Napolitano will sit on the council. 8. Quote, the Department of Agriculture shall provide funding and administrative support for the council to the extent permitted by law and within existing appropriations. End quote. So the funds are set aside. Right. We are broke, yet we have money sitting ready for yet another expansion of federal government. With DHS oversight and the DHS unlimited budget, yes, unlimited, I am sure the feds have plenty of money to move this agenda right into rural America. The Department of Homeland Security has no oversight, as they directly report to Lieberman, who is supposed to report to the president. And the perk is that DHS can demand more funds from Congress as part of their written budget through fiscal year 2012. Not ask, but demand. Remember, no matter what you, the taxpayer, will foot the bill for this expansion of government. 9. Quote, the Council shall coordinate its policy development through the Domestic Policy Council and the National Economic Council. End quote. Why do we need yet another council to cover a specific 16% of the country? Because rural America still has some degree of control over resources and we are resistant to globalization. This executive order allows the federal government to implement Agenda 21 right in the heart of America's food basket. This ultimately could bring the end to rural life as we know it. By asking for the agricultural departments to participate, they will mitigate resistance. Yes, control the food and you control the population. Think about this and research how well it worked out for California. 10. This executive order 
will coordinate federal efforts directed toward the growth and development of geographic regions that encompass both urban and rural areas and identify and facilitate rural economic opportunities associated with energy development, outdoor recreation, and other conservation-related activities. Geographic regions, target areas, just like FEMA or states, completely regionalized. This executive order requires that the appointed council shall set up regions, thereby removing the barriers to ICLEI's town-by-town -town focus and streamlining the effort to implement Agenda 21. 11. Quote, this order shall be implemented consistent with applicable law and subject to the availability of appropriations. End quote. Remember, there are no laws that re restrict the Department of Homeland Security, thus unlimited power over rural America. So, under pretenses that are false based on past performance, the federal government is attacking the United States using Agenda 21 ICLEI tactics, but it is much more direct this time. The actions are simple and the results measured but disastrous. Ask yourself how the federal government agenda gets into our schools, into the thoughts of our children. The states offer grants or loan to schools. The state then promotes to or seeks out interested school districts to apply. Every dollar has federal strings attached. The very same way, this executive order will ensure rural America's compliance and put our food supply in absolute danger through this rural council. The government has the rural council to help stimulate the rural economy. The feds just want to help, right? Their initial target audience will be agricultural organizations. Why? Say you are a farmer and a federal government representative knocks on your door asking you to apply for a loan or grant just to help you out. Would you think they would get very far? But if the trusted cattle or growers association, your neighbor, promoted it, then you might be a lot more interested and believe everything is on the up and up. There is no doubt at all that rural America in general is hurting right now. Farmers are stretched and some have already had to suck up their pride and take one form of government assistance or another just to feed their families in this declining economy. When the government start throwing this money out there with the support of trusted agricultural organizations, the temptation to apply will be huge. But if the help is accepted, the risk of losing is even greater. The government never wants to give you something for nothing. And while they speak out one side of their mouth telling you that this is to boost the dying economy, to help the rural communities and push forward on energy solutions, there will remain the high risk of default on loans and loopholes that farmer or businesses will have to jump through to receive these grants. The red tape has control written all over it. It may even dictate what you can or must be grown on a property just in order to be eligible to apply whether accepted or not. In the short term, it may sound great, but in the long term, it will bankrupt farms and businesses, discredit once trusted organizations, and break the hearts and pride of generations of rural Americans, while at the same time limiting Americans who depend on our rural breadbaskets for food and further destroy the American dollar. 
I just want to remind everyone that government money does not come from thin air. It comes from you and me, the American taxpayers. Every time the feds hand out grants or loans, we are footing the bill. When they say government money, it's ours. The dollar is in free fall. Our economy is in the toilet. And we borrow 41 cents of every dollar. Just ask yourself, can we afford another federal program anyway? Some say a one-world government would be a good thing, while others shy away, but otherwise do nothing to stop it. Most Americans that do know there is more than a strong potential for a new world order don't think it would be so bad, assuming that the world would be governed by a document like the United States Constitution but it has been proven by performance that globalization will not be ruled by anything close to the rule of law as we know it. The freedoms that have been known by older generations will not be shared by the new. The destruction of the United States Constitution is all but complete. We no longer have a two-party system. We have the party of D and R as one. We no longer have three branches of effective government. We have runaway presidents, plural. A legislative branch that either works against the people, puts on a show, generally right before an election cycle, or is bypassed altogether by executive order, presidential directorate, and backdoor reg regulation, mainly through DHS agencies. And we also have lifetime justices who have done and will continue to do nothing about it. There is no Tenth Amendment or Fourth Amendment. The Patriot Act supersedes the Constitution, and the majority of your rights and freedoms are mere illusions that the government grants you in order to keep you passive while they keep chipping away at the last bits of our foundation of freedom. There is no doubt that we are sitting on a time bomb. There is nothing good about this executive order. And while it is not earth-shattering compared to others which have been ignored over the decades, it is something that we now have the opportunity to speak up about. Something that we now have the opportunity to educate others with and help them wake up. Without the awakening of others, all is lost, and few are prepared for the multiple scenarios that potentially await us. This alert is an opportunity for you to put down your remote control and do something for your future generations. If all falls apart in their lifetime and they ask you what you were doing, will you look them in the eyes and say, well, I had to see who won Dancing with the Stars. Will you tell them that you were going to your local Democratic or Republican meetings to discuss the latest scandals with Wiener and Gingrich? Will you tell them that you had already lost all hope and were concentrating only on things that we could do nothing about? Or will you be able to tell them that you educated yourself and you put yourself out of your comfort zone to fight for them? This is your chance to actually do something. This is something that you can act on. Enough is enough. And if you haven't had it yet, then you aren't researching then you don't know how fragile things are right now. So, what can you do? You can spread the word. Action on this will require people knowing about it and understanding that it is of concern so they too will act. You can contact the following people or groups and make sure that they know what is happening so they can be aware and make roadblocks for the rural council before they can take action in your state, county, or home community. You know, get a hold of your cattlemen's association, your dairy associations, other farmers for cattle, sheep, horses, poultry, fish, mushrooms, eggs, corn, and other produce, um, agricultural organizations, those are going to be a target, your local sheriff, your sheriff's association, your mayor, your city and county councils, radio stations, TV stations if you need to, your local paper that people actually read, 
write an editorial, whatever you need to do. Your bullshit news stations, they're probably not going to say or do anything about it. But hey, it's always fun to annoy them anyway. Get a hold of your patriotic action networks, your state governments, constitutional lawyers, local justices, Agenda 21 groups. The federal government probably isn't going to care, but tell them anyway. Your attorney general probably isn't going to care, but tell them anyway. State tribes and tribal governments, they're a target. Governors, maybe they'll listen. Potential candidates for off-year election, give them something to run on and make them follow through on it. Your school board, your farm workers, your local churches, your health care providers are a target. Your chamber of commerce, rural tourism, small businesses in rural areas, grocery owners, even in urban areas, a, a lot of businesses rely on stuff from these bread baskets. There's so many people you can contact. Horse owners, sportsmen's associations, fishermen, four-wheel drive and off-road associations. Shoot, call up NASCAR. I don't care. Rodeo associations, um, hunters, boaters, outdoorsmen, your friends, your family, your co-workers, your inner circle, anyone who needs to eat to live. Also be advised that if you're lucky enough to get any roadblocks up, that they might get desperate enough to even go through national groups and organizations like the American Quarter Horse Association to pull off some sort of support. We don't know yet. But for the moment, you still have a voice, and now is the time that you should be using it. You can get into your local school board, your city council and commissioner meetings. As boring as they are, it is an opportunity for you to use your voice to make a difference while you still have it. Once they know you're involved because you are taking the time to show up and sit through their mostly empty seat meetings, they will listen to you. Whether they like you or not, they will listen to you. They're just people like you and me, so don't feel intimidated. But you have to understand that like our state representatives and higher, these people may be elected, but they are not used to people standing up for themselves. They are used to making decisions on their own. That is a huge part of the overall problem. Roadblocks could have gone up faster on so many things, but people in general are so obsessed with their free time that they risk their freedom. Use it or lose it. Our electeds cannot effectively represent you if they don't know what you want. You probably have more time to do research on this stuff than them. Feed it to them, educate them, and keep the Rural Council, ICLEI, DHS, and the UN out of your local communities. Remember, the only person that can stop you from acting is you. 99% of the time, we are all our own worst enemy when it comes to following through on something that we really don't even want to do, or something that might take us out of our comfort zone. That's when the excuses start rolling. Trust me, before I found the rabbit hole leading to the truth, I was the queen of excuses. Take it from me, it's a lot easier to get out of your comfort zone, educate yourself further, and take action than you realize. You just have to tell yourself that you will, not, I can. I can is a cop-out. Tell yourself you will, and then do it. Most of us are a lot stronger than we think. At very least, you should be getting out and meeting people in your local communities anyway, so you can find others who are concerned and preparing for the what-if-we-fail scenarios. Find your motivation, whether it be your kids, your grandkids, your right to hunt, your anger on spending, your knowledge of HARP, your fear of SWAT busting into people's homes to collect late student loans, your frustration that your family thinks you're nuts just because you're paying attention, your concerns on an international level of potential war, whatever will get you off your butt and doing. 
no election or representative can or will save us from what is happening right now or what is to come. It is up to you to make a difference. And I know from experience that the power of one can be huge. Don't be afraid of what people think of you. Chances are, if they think you're crazy, they are uneducated beyond help. Concentrate on those who will listen. Start slow, educate them, and pray for the best.